Hello and welcome to Stamping and Sipping with Tea. My name is Teresa and before we get started, I just wanted to thank everyone who has taken the time to subscribe to our channel. Your subscribing means a lot to us. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this adorable card. It's using Stamping Up products as well as a Jim Holtz embossing folder. So let's just jump right on in, shall we? The cardstock itself, the basic color is from Stamping Up, it's the Evening Evergreen. And it measures four, I'm sorry, it measures eight and a half by five and a half. So on the eight and a half side, you wanna fold it in half. And I did score it ahead of time. I do have the bone folder right here. Give it a nice seam. Step one, already done, we've got that. Now you know I like to keep a stack of pre-cut white cardstock. This measures four inches by five and a quarter, and it's just a quarter inch smaller so that we have that nice little border going around it. On the inside of this card, I did some embossing, but I didn't want to do that on this one. I wanted to do something a little different because I'm curious as to how it will come out. Now, I will be using the tree from the Whimsical Trees, but I'm also going to, I really like some pieces from the frosted gingerbread and i'll show you what i used on the first card with that but this one i'm going to put may the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart so let me make sure i grab that out get a stamping block i have a bunch of these little um little ca uh, cabinet type things right here on my desk it makes it easier one of the things I really like about Stamping Up products is you have coordinating cardstock and ink. So I'm using the Evening Evergreen, Evening Evergreen ink. Now I'm talking to myself, so guess who made an appearance and is walking around my feet? That's right, we've got Leo in the house. He's probably not gonna meow for us, which is okay. We don't necessarily wanna hear him. Um, if you really like it very straight, you might wanna spend a lot of time on it. Sometimes I'll just, make it off center, just because I don't like the stress of trying to make it all centered. That way it's on purpose, it's off centered. Close this up, we will be needing more of that, put that off to the side. So we have that done, I'll assemble it in a minute. Moving on, let me talk you through this process right here. The first thing I wanted to do was to get this beautiful gold, and it's that brushed gold paper, I wanted to get that frame done. So I went to what I have, Okay, and these are the stitched shapes. Again, this is a Stamping Up product, and if you wanted to contact your demonstrator, that's the number you would need. Now, these ovals, we have three sizes. I'm sorry, we have four sizes. We're working with three. So there's the small, so I'm gonna name that one, two, three, and four is the largest. So what I did is I took the largest, number four, ignored number three for now, and went down to number two, okay? So just working with those two pieces, I then took this beautiful, hopefully it's not reflecting reflecting obnoxiously for you, but it has like this brushed finish and it's in a coppery gold sort of color. And you can tell I already did one. And I use, you can use washi tape or if you are like me and have a lot of post-it notes for some reason lying around the house, you can use post-it notes. So put the first one down. That one's not the issue. The second one you wanna take some time with. You wanna really, Look at the difference between your inside one and your number four one, the largest one. And once you have it centered exactly how you want it, I would recommend securing it down. Again, post-it notes work well. I know that other people use washi tape, whatever you want. Then you would take this and you would go run it through your, um, your machine, your big shot or whatever it is you have. And I did that ahead of time just to save us. And this is what you wind up with. Perfect, right? So we've got that layer. Let me leave that right off here, maybe over there so it doesn't reflect too much of the light. Now for this, I took a piece of that pre-cut cardstock that I always have on hand. And for this one, I came back. Now remember, there were four sizes. One, two, three, and four. And I used number four. Ooh, pardon all those things. I'm going to just leave them for now. And I used number two. But this time, I want the second largest one. I call it my number three, so it's the second largest one. Teresa, clean it up, make it easier for people to see. Hold on, 
Nothing like chastising myself in front of everybody. That's okay. I'd rather you all get it because I don't want to confuse anybody. So again, we have four sizes. I'm taking the second largest size this time. Okay. So one, two, that I can, in my head, I call that three. You could do them A, B, C, whatever. But anyhow, it's the second largest one. And on another piece of your pre-cut cardstock, again, this would measure four inches by five and a quarter because we want that border to show. You're going to take this. Now, what I did like about my little background here, and this is just contact paper, is I try to even it up. So that's sort of my center. I eyeball a lot. And then I've got these pieces. So I want the difference here and the difference here to be about the same because I do tend to eyeball it. So then I figure right around center is that. Whoops, I do need to turn that over. And you would take more time. I don't want to lean in and then you'll have to see, you know, the gray hair. But anyhow, I try to center it as best I can. Again, I would use um, some post-it notes to secure it, take it over to the machine, and in the one, and through the magic, not of editing, because we don't edit these videos at all, but through the magic of having done it ahead of time, I feel very Martha Stewart, by the way, boom, that's what you're going to come out with. Now, I wanted to give it a little something more. I didn't want it just plain, and I looked through all the die, I'm sorry, all the embossing folders that I have, and I had this one from Jim Holtz. Okay, and it looks like the snow is falling down. So what I did is I then took my pre-cut cardstock, took it over to my, I have a cuddle bug as well, and that's what I have. So now I have that piece done, see? So you can see the layers kind of coming together. So that's, that's gonna be these two layers. Now for the fun part, now we get to stamp and let's do the tree. I tell you all the time, keep your scrap paper, keep keep as many scraps as you can. And just to prove it, I have my um, scrap white folder container. Look at all those scraps I have in there. Oh, there's one that's not even right. Look at that. That's from another project. I tell you, I save them all. You never know when a small piece of scrap paper or large will come in handy. The important thing is, is you do want your piece of paper to where when you put your tree on it, because I'm gonna do a tree again, you could put anything you wanna highlight. It doesn't matter if it's the tree. Oh, should we do something different? No, I'm not going to do something different. I squirrel. I know. I thought that would be really pretty in there. I might do that on another one, but I promise this one, so we'll do this one. Anyhow, you just want to make sure that it will fit. The paper's large enough to where when you stamp on it and you put this on top, it'll fit. So the tree I chose is this guy. Oh, I love him. He looks like he already has the snowballs on top. So let me grab yet another block come on come on Ugh. big hands makes it difficult sometimes okay let's go ahead and apply him and then yes using my evening evergreen let me ink it up take your time with the inking i know sometimes it appears that i'm rushing through and i kind of am for you guys because i'm aware that you don't want to sit through a very long video and that's probably why i talk too much too during them and then let's push down. Don't make the mistake of rocking it back and forth. Just some light pressure. Give it a second. Let that ink come through. I've even done it to where I've pushed it so hard it messed up the image. So you don't want to do that. Look, isn't that pretty? I love the softness of that. And I'll put that dirty stamp over there to the side. So now we can really just start putting it together. Now for this one, you can use your stamp and Seal Plus or you can use some glue. I am today, because I have some folks coming over very soon to make some more cards, I'm going to use my Tombow glue. Because this is nice and thick, Tombow works great. And it offers me that little bit of maneuverability. So, now, if you all looking over my shoulder, let's see if I can get that how I like it. Boom. Yep, that looks good. And just hold it down for a second. Give that glue a chance to adhere. And you can see we're going to layer this up. We're going to do that. Now this piece, unfortunately, I didn't do this ahead of time, so I am going to have to walk away from you guys. And for that, I do apologize. But it's the die. Why was I pulling out the stamp? I don't know. It's the die from the gingerbread suite. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, my goodness. Now, because I have some pre-cut cardstock that I used, and I'm trying to grab it. 
Well, you know what? I'm just going to use the pre-cut cardstock up here because it measures the exact width that I want. So I'm, that's the beauty of having it all in place. I'm going to use this right here, and I am going to have to leave you. I'm going to try to do it as quick as I can. Put those off to the side. Let me secure this down with just a piece of post-it paper. Oops, sorry for shaking. Sorry, sorry. I'll be right back. Let me go over to my big shot. Real quick, I'll run this through. As soon as I say real quick, nothing ever works the way I want it to. Oh, if y'all saw this, you'd be laughing at me. That's okay. I'll get it done. Somehow, some way, I will make this happen. Come on, come on. Okay, coming back. Stay with me. I'm just going to bring the whole thing just to save time. See, look at that hot mess that I do sometimes. It's okay. I'm going to put that off to the side. Put that off to the side. That's now the piece I'll use for the rest of these. Let's get that going. But I just thought that was so pretty. Let's just wipe that down. And most of these little pieces, look at it. They all popped out except for one. Let me get that. No, two. I beg your pardon. There. Perfect. So we have those done. Now it's really just about assembling. Again, for this one, I'm going to put some glue. Now this, be careful. I'm just going to use this stitch line right around it because I know that's not gonna be showing. I'm going to use that as for where I'm gonna put this glue, this Tombow glue. So just put it right around there. There we go. Okay. And then and this offers, again, that glue just gives you that second to move it a little bit. And then I'm going to just press. Actually, what I might do is just put that on there for a minute. This is also going to be attached using the glue, the Tombow glue, after I think I put it on the card. So this is why it's nice to have a piece. I'm going to let that just set for just another second. I am, for this one, going to pull out my Stampin' Seal Plus. And I like to apply it to all four sides. You'll see people apply different ways. It's okay. As long as it works for you, that's the way you should do it. I do like to run it along all four sides. I tend to look at the bottom. And once I get this bottom lined up how I like it, I just let gravity take hold. Boom. There we go. And we are so close to finishing. It always amazes me how we can achieve such elegant, beautiful, fun, you name it, cards with, it, it, it doesn't take extremely long. I mean, you can do far more complicated cards, that's true. But I like the simple elegance. That's what I call it in my head. I think this is simple elegance. For this one, because we have that kind of raised, I am gonna do that. And now, let's go ahead and apply this one. Again, I use the bottom of the card to kind of line it up because I figure if this distance looks the same as that one and that one, I have I should end up with a fairly centered card. Boom. See, isn't that pretty? Now here's the difference. You have a couple of choices here. You can do what I did and go ahead and put this on, and I thought that looked really pretty. Obviously, that's why I did it. But of course, this is a different color. This is a different color cardstock, but you could also put something like that on there and raise it up. It's up to you. Um, that's the beauty again. I think I've said it before. If you see elements from more than one card that you like, there is nothing saying you can't incorporate more than one element on your card. Be inspired and then make the card your own. Do what you want. That's the beauty of all this because when you bring something different to the table and share it with somebody else, then, you know, when I know something and you know something, we each know something. But when you share what you know, and I share what I know, then we both know two things. And of course it goes on and so on and so on and so on, but it's a good thing. In my opinion, it's a good thing. That's why I like it when people share. I am gonna use my fancy schmancy tweezers. Hopefully I do it correctly. I do a lot of eyeballing, so it's all right. I just trust that it will, it will work out. Sometimes it does. That glue also gives you just a second to smidge it up or down. That's a little crooked. So let me see if I can move it just a tinge. I think that's better. That looks pretty darn good to me, see? 
we're coming along. Now, when I had gotten this far on the first one, it just felt like it needed a little bit more. And you're gonna notice a couple of different things, and I'm gonna show you what I did. But I did take out some pearls. To me, this was screaming for pearls. I think they kind of mimic the snowball, so that's what I did. All right, and I put one in the corner. This is a little bit different. I tend to like three over here, but the card will dictate sometimes what it wants as if it talks to me, but you know what I mean. And then I took out my old friend, Wink of Stella. Let me give it a quick little shake. Phew, getting warm in here. Now, when I did the Wink of Stella, at first I was just kind of going around to all the bigger ones. You might not see it on this, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but in person you can see the shimmer that Wink of Stella gives. And I just went after some of the bigger I consider them snowflakes, even though they're little round blob type of things. But watch what happens when you put it, I'll just do one half. And sometimes it might smear the ink a little bit, which is fine, just know that it could do that. But I'm only gonna do half, just so you can kind of see. But do you see the different effect? And it's gonna dry even lighter than that. But you can tell that it helps pull out that color even brighter. I don't know, I just think it's really pretty it added a little something to it. So you have that glitter effect, but without the glitter. So for all your friends who really are like, don't send me any glitter cards. Well, you can send them a card with some Wink of Stella and they should not have a problem with it. I wanted to put something down here to hold it. Now this is the part where I wanna line it up for you guys. Hopefully we've got a good shot. Let me get my hand out of the way. And there you have it. Again, we just used a couple of products. Um, from Stamping Up, we did use a product from Jim Holtz, but use what you have, create what you have. And there you have it. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please consider doing so. And until the next time, happy stamping.